All right, Andre. Hey. First of all, happy Lunar New Year. Yeah, that's right. I guess in uh, Vietnam, it's the year of the cat. That's what I did the research oh, really? on. Yeah, I tried to do some yeah. research. Yeah. Oh, it's the rabbit. Well, the rabbit for, for Chinese New Year, but uh, the research that I had seen was oh, wow. for Vietnam. So, anyways, happy, but that's not what we're talking about today. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I brought you in, obviously, because um, you uh, have been talking about a certain subject that I find that really resonated with me. Um, and you've got some fabulous posts, by the way. Um, and I want you to share your story while we're talking about it. So, yeah, um, for me, I brought you in because why it resonated with me is I have three brothers. You know, I'm from an Asian family. And, uh, you know, you're, we grew up traditional Asian uh, with those certain values and, and um, the stigma of, you know, in order to be strong, you got to keep it inside sort of thing. Um, and my father passed away, so my brothers grew up with no father figure. So I've seen, uh, from my experience, how it's affected them. They may not notice it, but for me, as a woman and as an empath, I've seen the results. Uh, and so this, this podcast is sort of like a, a love letter to my brothers and also to my son, because, you know, their uncles are the example right and so I kind of wanted to to um, kind of create that awareness that you know vulnerability is actually a good thing mm. so I'm gonna leave it to you okay. I want to hear your story and then tell me about the work you're doing absolutely there's, yeah. there's lots there yeah so, let's unpack <laughs> yeah we're having a little uh, fireside chat right? yes yeah yeah so even even look back now I can realize you know I grew up in a family I'd say is emotionally stunted. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's just the examples of what I've seen with my parents and mm -hmm. what my parents saw with their parents. Right. So it's a generational thing. Yeah. Not sure where I went array, yeah. sidetrack along the way, though just observing, we wouldn't communicate our emotions. It just wasn't a thing. Yeah, same with my family. <laughs> the only emotion <laughs> would be anger. Yeah. Yeah, and it would be pent up frustration. So I would see it a lot with uh, my mom and dad in their arguments and mm -hmm. Till this day, it's yeah. still kind of like that, right. and in myself, in my brother and sister as well. It's just that repeated pattern. Yeah, yeah. And there's no touching, like there's no words of affirmation, and those two are my two top love languages. Yes. After yeah. I found out I did that quiz, yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. I didn't get none of this at all. <laughs> yeah. No wonder I feel like I'm so messed up. Yeah, yeah. So during my journey growing up, I was the only child for a long time. Born and raised here in Edmonton. Oh. My parents came over from the Vietnam War and oh, wow. it was tough, you know, yeah. coming to a new country, working yeah. immediately and having me yeah. in the early 20s. Uh, they had to really just grow up fast, right? Yeah. And, and adapt to this new culture. Mm -hmm. Being right. already 20 years old, coming into here and just working right away. So yeah. they value education quite a bit because yeah. you know, with Asian culture, yeah. education, yeah. anything around making a lot of money. Yeah. We all hear the stories, right? Yeah. The doctor, the lawyer, the engineer, yeah. Yeah. or work for the government. Yeah. Government's great, you know, yeah. great benefits, right? And they just want my life to be better than their life right. was going to be. Though the only way they knew it was being strict and disciplined. Yes. Okay. And that Same here. <laughs> crushed me. Yeah. So I had the two choices of either being the good son mm. or being something else than the good son. <laughs> something else is would probably be rebellious Yeah. in a way. So... The days of like bringing the report card home would be like, it felt like I was on death row, waiting for capital punishment, um, sweating. Oh my God. Heavy breathing and just, it's just really tensed up, ready for a beating. Wow. And that was the discipline was really physical yeah. mm -hmm. beating. Yeah. And that scared me to think that I wasn't smart enough because the report cards and their reinforcement of that, as well as, Comparing me with other kids that were better. Absolutely, yeah, I've seen that, that I had to get the right answer the very first time. And for them, they looked at the homework, they yeah. came from another country, they're like, how can I help you, right? Yeah. So I was really off my own. Wow. And in school, realizing, why am I daydreaming? Like, I couldn't really pay attention. Oh. You know, I, I like to have fun. Yeah. And in Asian culture, growing up that time, you shouldn't have fun. You should be studying. Yeah. 
she'd be coming home and it got a curfew, yeah. the major discipline. So I just end up revolting from it, like rebelling. Yeah. It, it, it became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. I remember this one memory moment where they would compare my forehead. Oh. And yes, yes, so physical features. And because if you look at my forehead, it's, it's kind of like pushes up, right? It's not, there's a big forehead popping out or anything like okay, that. Okay, that, that's what you see. I don't see that. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, I didn't see it either yeah. till my parents pointed out. Oh. Because I had a flat forehead, that meant I wouldn't smart. Oh, wow. Because I would hear them saying, if you have a big forehead, you have a big brain, you'd be yeah. smart. Yeah. So right away, that influence in who I was. Yeah. Right away, I had beliefs of, I'm not good enough. Yeah. I'm not smart enough. I'm not worthy of their love because right. it's based on performance and I felt like I was worthless. And also too, growing up in, as a, you know Asian in this world of bridging the two worlds together, it's like comparing my beauty standards of what I think was oh, handsome yeah. to Canadian white standards yeah. of beauty. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, yeah. so that, that had a hard effect on my uh, uh, worthiness as well. I didn't think I was good looking growing up. Wow. And there's times where people are like, wow, you're a good looking guy. Yeah. I'm like, uh, no, like I couldn't accept it yeah. for a long time. Yeah. So I, I pushed everything back, self-fulfilling prophecy. I decided to, hey, live it. So I didn't care. Oh. And then I got involved with the wrong crowd. Right. In junior high, started skipping school, wow. started smoking, wow. drugs. Yeah. Why not? I mean, I, I vibe with those kids because yeah. we were... Kind of like the outfits, the yeah. misfits, mm-hmm. the delinquents, mm-hmm. and we the kind outcasts. of felt that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that led me to just like, just not caring whatsoever, yeah. Yeah. and showing up to class high out of my mind. Wow. Yeah, I, I just didn't care. Are you kidding me? Really? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I kind of, I remember the one moment in math class, I stumped the whole, the whole class. Oh. Yeah, I was like, smoking spliffs or you know marijuana and getting super oh. high and coming to class and. I didn't care what people thought of yeah, me at that time yeah. because any sort of feeling that I had, I had to numb myself. Mm-hmm. And I started developing these addictive behaviors with uh, video games, right. pornography, masturbation, mm-hmm. alcohol, yeah. drugs early on. Yeah. And yeah, it just was that. Though luckily, somehow along the way, I still passed. Like, wow. I was a 60 what? student. And stuff oh, like wow. That. Yeah. And I would, yeah, like I just made it through. And yeah. there's times where I had to take. Uh, what would you call it, like uh, summer courses? Oh yeah, for, yeah. for credits yeah, and stuff like right, that. Because yeah. I summer school, yeah. Yeah, there was a critical moment where I remember my dad. He found uh, in the cigarette case uh, a weed, so yeah. I was selling weed at the time. Wow! And he had that conversation with me of like, "Okay, you, you gotta like shape up, right? Right. And do something about this." And I hit hard. I also have a little brother and sister. Me and my brother were 10 years apart. So this mm. big age difference. Yeah, okay. Only child for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then just seeing them grow up, I just didn't want to impact their lives. And right. I saw the lives of these people that were dealing drugs. Yeah. And they weren't close with their family. And I saw how it would impact yeah. the relationships. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to put them in danger. Right. So that was just the back of my head. And mm-hmm. I decided, you know what? I don't want to be part of this anymore. Oh. And I'm like, you know what? What should I do? Hmm. Was this in your twenties now? Like, were you? Yeah, th- oh. th- this is getting close to like high school. High oh, school, still in high. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then I was thinking about post secondary, though I didn't think I was smart enough for university. Oh no. No. Yeah. Oh. Considering my my both my brother and sister yeah, graduated yeah. from U of A, right? I'm like crack that wow. armor. Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I, I'll go into Nate. Two years is good. Okay. Good enough for my level yeah. of intelligence and not trusting because I had no mentors. Uh, yeah. My dad. In terms of like a father figure, mm-hmm. a male figure, I didn't have that in my life. It was right. existent. I was afraid of my father. Mm-hmm. And my father never gave me a gun other than like I had to get it right the first yeah. time. So I was fearful of him. Mm-hmm. So I developed this um, front that I'm okay. I'm good. I don't need any help. So I'll create stories oh, wow. to pretend I'm good. Right. I, I can make up stories of like, oh, okay. Andre's life is pretty good, even though his life is not. Right. Behind the scenes. Yeah. That was my mask. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, who who would I go to? So I didn't go to a counselor or a therapist or anything like that. Or I just decided, hey, I love video games. Oh. I love surfing the internet. Okay. Why not uh, do something with computers? So I'm like, hey, computer programming. Oh. So why not do that? Yeah. And that was a perfect time back in the day to go in that field. I did it. 
And this time, like, I had to apply myself because that conversation was that that kind of like woke me up. Okay. And I knew that when I tried, I started asking questions, started seeing in front of the class. Okay. Yeah. Different, right? Yeah. Actually trying. Yeah. That what the heck? I, I passed with honors. Like what? Whoa! Yeah, I started the opposite of high school. Exactly. <gasps> Though I became this uh, perfectionist. Okay. I became this hyperachiever. I went the extreme end of like, I better get like like ninety over and even if it was like 80 something percent yeah, yeah. i'll be like i'm stupid I, i'm not good enough so that was like a competition with yourself yeah wow. to compete yeah because i was trying to break out that mold mm -hmm. and i wanted to be smart so i tried so hard about yeah. it so after that i'm like okay i gotta i got a piece of paper what should i do yeah and then get a career right yeah. so just get to a career yeah. uh some things happen along the way that i Got into a uh, software development position with, wow. a, with a great company here locally, oh, wow. and through that had opportunities to move up yeah. immediately. Yeah. And the whole time I had a chip on my shoulder to prove something. Oh yes, yeah. So I climbed the ladder, okay. did what it needed to take, mm -hmm. moving from cubicle to corner cubicle yeah. with the window wow. to an office yeah. to you know and so forth. Wow. And I was able to travel the world with it. Uh, the oh. team in India, a team in Mexico, a team here to outsource <sighs> software development to. Okay. Here's the thing, Alita. Yeah. I didn't love what I do. Um, oh, isn't that it, interesting? Yeah. I just did it because, like, I was just going by the escalator of life. Right. right? I didn't right. know. I didn't consult anybody yeah. or had any mentorship yeah. or leadership on that. I just did, hey, what what makes sense in terms of society? Yeah. And during that time, I got into a long-term relationship. Yeah. And I didn't know. Like, when I get into a relationship with someone, I'm like, man. I like her, she likes me, he yeah. likes you. Right. That's not fun, right? Yeah. yeah. Though I didn't realize that I was doing my own toxic behaviors uh -huh. of what I see my parents' relationship were. Right. That turned into that. Yeah. So she ended up being like my mom and I was like my dad. Right, right. Where she was the masculine take control mm -hmm. and I was more passive and yeah. people pleasing. Yeah. So I made her priorities my needs. I lost myself in that relationship. Yeah. We became kind of like roommates. Yeah. And the job that I work was just really paying the bills. Yeah. And I was spending as much as I was mm -hmm. making. Mm -hmm. So living for the weekend. Yeah. Parties, traveling, yeah. you name it. Yeah. Yeah, not good. And I was kind of going down the road of escalator life. Like, okay, you know what? We'll uh, we'll get married. Yeah. We'll get a house and we'll have kids. That's right. in my mind. Yeah. That's what was what's happening. That's your mm -hmm. life. And then I'd call it uh, divine intervention. Oh, I'm, I'm excited about this now. Okay, because <laughs> I didn't have the courage to quit. Oh. Looking back, my parents still work the same job for 30 plus years. Together. Right. And I, I was never gave like that energy to like do something you love. Go for something passionate. Right. If you don't like quit and move on. Yeah. I was very risk adverse because mm -hmm. I was afraid to fail. Right. So that kept me in the box. Mm -hmm. So divine intervention was a kick in the butt by the universe, source, God. Yeah. Whatever you call it, yeah. there's something that woke me up. Okay. And, you know, my girlfriend left me. Right. Uh, I got laid off from my job. Wow. And those are big kicks. Those are big kicks. Though, wow. Though I, I felt like I won the lottery. Like, I was, <laughs> I was so excited. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. actually super happy. Right. There was like a little relief kind of. Yeah. 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 Get out of jail free card. I yeah. It, right? Yeah. I hear yeah. you. So I'm like, you know what? Okay. I got to try something different. Yeah. Okay. Let's go into sales. I was okay. attracted to the salespeople. Oh. All my life, what I've observed, and my friends were in sales, whether they were mm -hmm. insurance or in uh, uh, mortgage brokerage, yeah. uh, realtors and stuff. I'm like, man, they always seem to know people. Yeah. Uh, get into clubs easy, or yeah. restaurants, oh, yeah. hookups and stuff. I'm my like, brother's like that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah. I mean, when yeah. I look at them, I'm like, yeah. hmm, they're connected. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like I was a follower. Oh, like I was okay. a paper bag floating in the wind. Yeah, okay. Right? Even though people thought to me and they gave me feedback that I was, you had everything together. Yeah. You had a career. You have that appearance. Like, yes. Yeah. It's a mask. Yeah. So then I went sales because I was attracted to the charisma, to the confidence right. that they had. Yeah. Because that brought me back to the time where I traveled. Okay. And when I travel, I'm me. Oh. It's weird. No, I It's understand. a weird shift. Yeah. And then the world started reacting to me yeah. versus me reacting. I started connecting with strangers, getting to know the culture, yeah. getting to make friends. But then when I come back home, I'm not like that. Yeah. 
as if I'm, when I'm with my family, I become a clumsy little boy again. Mm-hmm. Right? With my friends, I become that guy that starts drinking and doing drugs and getting messed yeah. up. Because they know me for that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So with sales, that kickstart my personal development career. And I highly, highly, highly recommend taking sales. It's the best personal development way to help communicate and get that instant feedback with people. Because right. life point. is people. Life yeah. is relationships. Yeah. You know how to communicate, yeah. connect, yeah. do door-to-door sales. Yeah. Oh my God, that's the biggest like yeah. lessons we can learn from. Right, right. So then I, I, I call it YouTube University. Okay. Oh. I go on YouTube. Yeah. Learning how to sell. I go across YouTube. people like yeah. Tony Robbins, yeah. you know, Jim Rohn, John right. Maxwell, Gary V, Simon Sinek. Yeah. And like, where was this all my life? Yeah. <laughs> why didn't teach us in school? Yeah. Like, right. My parents, why did you give this? And I, I started to feel. Because up to that point, I was disconnected. Mm-hmm. Disconnected. In my head, yeah. always analyzing, thinking about the perfect response yeah. so that I don't look stupid. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. I was afraid to be wrong. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I felt this connection a little bit because it was like, what the heck? Yeah. Do you mean I'm a victim? Do you mean I have no control of my thoughts, feelings, and actions? Yeah. But wait, I have a choice. Yeah. I can be responsible. Mm-hmm. I can empower myself. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is my mission. Yeah. To get to know me. Oh, wow. So I started peeling back the layers of Andre. God, I just got goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then that's what I'm here for. I, I've discovered that I'm here to work with people. Yeah. I realize I love people. Yes. Yeah. But I couldn't love them until I love myself. Right. And then when I was beginning to love myself, I was going on this journey yeah. of also supporting others to get to know themselves. Because wow. along the way, that armor around me yeah. started to fall off one by one. And I'm assuming that your relationships now, whether it be you know, platonic or romantic or business, mm-hmm. they're probably a lot better because you've, you've shown that vulnerability of yourself now, right? Mm. It comes from a healthy place. Yeah. I say it's not coming from a wounded place. Yeah. One example is how I see my parents. Right. And for the longest time, I had resentment. Yeah. And it would, it would, I would feel it yeah. when I'm around them. Mm-hmm. And it would, that relationship would be toxic. Yeah. Because I would, I would create that energy field mm-hmm. between us. Yeah. The quickest way for me to change someone is to change my attitude about someone. That's a good one. Yeah. So how I see them, how I treat them. Yeah. How I talk to them yeah. will change the dynamic of the relationship. That's right. When I start to learn myself, I'm like, wow, I'm responsible for this. Yeah. I get to see them and where they're at and yeah. what they were taught and growing up with. Yes. That allowed me to have some empathy. Right. I was just right? going to say that, yeah. I'm actually grateful now yeah. that I was born here. Yeah. And they gave me what they could to allow me to grow and live right. and actually do this work on myself. Yeah. We're not in the middle of a war zone. We're not starving yeah. or anything like that. So I'm like, yeah. oh my God, thank you so much. So yeah. then my energy shifted towards them mm-hmm. to see they did the best they could. Yeah. Again, I just had the tool. Yeah. Right? It's not about forgiveness yet yeah. or going into the trauma yeah. unpack. It's more of I'm grateful. Yeah. And that's a big first step for me. For sure. And then that changed the dynamic of the relationship. Well, I'm just, I'm just thinking if, if, yeah, if you were not where you are today and your history was different, you'd be a totally different person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, okay, in my personal opinion, because of your posts and, and stuff, you know, your videos I've seen on social media, I think you are a good version of uh, the best version of yourself, I think, from what I've seen. Mm. So now knowing your history, it's like, wow, maybe this is where you're supposed to be, obviously. So yeah, the gratitude is there. I, I, I'm taking my, my experience too with my, my family and thinking, you know, when I was younger, maybe I wish that didn't happen and that didn't happen, but then I wouldn't be here. Right? Mm. So that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. It's like living life with no regrets. Yeah. And there's no shame or guilt around that. Because yeah. I wouldn't be where I am without those experiences, right? right? So I'm like, ah, that's cool. I'm, I'm here. I exist. Yeah. We believe in the multiverse, right? The yeah. Multiple timelines. And yes. I'm choosing to live this timeline right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's up to my choices what I do next. Yeah. Though so I can take those lessons. So actually, I'm changing timelines mm-hmm. because I'm transmuting my past. I'm not getting stuck in it. Yeah. The only reason I get stuck in my past mm-hmm. is when I don't learn from that lesson and I keep repeating it until I yes. learn. 
So I keep redoing it over yeah. and over and over because I'm unconscious to it. Yeah. But once I'm conscious to it, I can be like, what's the lesson here? Yeah. Once I get the lesson, the past changes. Yeah. So as a result, I go on a different timeline. Yeah. See that? Yeah. That's so I can time one. travel in my current timeline. Right. So how I view the past and transmute it into lessons so I can use it now and in the future. Oh, that's a good one. That's called alchemy. Yeah. It's transmuting the energetic field that we're a part of. Right. If you believe in past lives, past generations, mm-hmm. same thing. Yeah. We tap into that. Yeah. We can transmute it and break the cycle. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's the idea. Powerful. So awareness is beautiful, yeah. right? This work of self-development, yeah. everyone's got to do it. Yeah. They got to do it for themselves. Yes. That's why it led me on this mission mm-hmm. to raise the conscious humanity through self empowerment. Because when I fully understood that I was responsible for my thoughts, feelings, yes. and actions, yeah. wait a minute, if everybody was thinking the same way, mm-hmm. they're responsible for the thoughts, feelings, and actions. Not blaming, shaming, yeah. judging, putting it outside. The world would be heaven on earth. Absolutely. You have a choice. Yeah. You would. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh my gosh, that's incredible. And that self empowerment is the best way because yeah. then you have the answers. You choose for yourself. Yeah. There's no control here. There's no resentment here. Yeah. Right? And then we can know how to self govern ourselves and self direct ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We have that power. Yeah. And just that been along the way, we've been disempowered. Yeah. So that's why I'm on this life mission. Because wow. after a while, these pieces falling off, yeah. there was one piece left. Yeah. It was around my heart. Yeah. Oh. And in land, they say the longest distance a man has to travel is from their head to the heart. Right. And I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. Because I wasn't in a space that allowed me to express freely. Yeah. And and feel safe and not judged. So yeah. if someone is looking to connect with the heart, I'd say find an environment. An environment for me that changed my life was Toastmasters is one. Oh, yes, that's great. I'm in one of those. Yeah. B and I. Yeah. Some entrepreneurial groups mm-hmm. where people want just a better life for themselves. Yeah, for sure. So they'll support you. Yeah. Right? Because they yeah. see themselves in you. So then I would go there to practice mm-hmm. speaking, yeah. practice showing up as this different version and getting that feedback. Yeah. And after a while, putting enough reps, like going to the gym, yeah. doing enough curls, your biceps are going to grow. Yeah. That confidence comes yeah. because I have the experience. Yeah. It only comes from taking the action. Yeah. I cannot think about it. Thinking about it gets me stuck in my head. Right. Over and over and over. And that's where my saboteurs, those are my like limiting beliefs and mm-hmm. my paradigms exist. Yeah. I have to just act. Yeah. And then from there, imperfect action, learn from that. And from the learning of it, transmuting it, yeah. all of a sudden become more humble and more grateful and more convicted in who I am. Yeah. So to know who I am, I gotta know who I, I'm not through yeah. those experiences. So I think that's the quickest way is switching the environment. Because if I'm with a group, same group of friends, yeah. family, and they're super negative, mm-hmm. it's hard. It's crabs in the bucket. Yes. If I want to get out, they're like, no. Yeah. Because there's a certain version they view. And we've yeah. heard this before. Yeah. Easiest way is switch cities. If, that, if that's simple. Oh, yeah. If yeah. you switch to a different city you live, yeah. guarantee you're going to be a different version of yourself. Yeah. And I, I, I really see we live multiple timelines if we can yeah. multiple lives in one lifetime actually that's a good point that you talk about the different cities because i did i actually moved away um to calgary for about 10 years mm. and that was a great experience for me because i did leave that city after 10 years a totally different person mm. and it was again it was one of those kicks mm. i got a good kick in the butt um and uh, when i left it was a, hor- a horrible experience um, and then I had to find my way back when I moved back to Edmonton, mm. but, and it took me a while, actually a few, few years. I didn't even like, I loved, I love snowboarding. So if I go to the mountains, I try to bypass okay. Calgary is how much oh, okay. that negativity was in me. Mm. Um, but I still had close friends there that I wanted to see. So it was really difficult for me and they they were even trying to get me to move back. <laughs> I said, no, there's no way. But, uh, just the fact that. That kick in the butt, because it was a really bad one, a really bad kick in the butt, um, took me a few years to overcome. I'm still kind of getting over a few of the, you know, the things that happened with me there. But overall now, I, I can actually go to that city and, and I'm okay. But yeah, we talk about that kick in the butt and, and, the, and the, the person that, uh, that you were when you arrived in that city is totally different from when you, when I've left. So yeah. <laughs> the great test is uh, they go back to an old spot 
you hang out with. Oh, go, yeah. go, go back to the house that you grew up in. Yep. And how music triggers certain memories. Oh my God, I remember that music formed me to yeah. this memory. Yeah. It shows a huge contrast between who I was to yep. who I am today. Yeah. The environment. Yeah. Because Calgary in itself has that that memory, that yeah. energy feel that can pull you back to that version yes, of yourself again. Yes, 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 absolutely. Right? Wow. So getting up, moving in Jim Rome is, is funny with this quote. Yeah. It's like, yeah. move, like yeah. you ain't a tree, Yeah. right? That's you funny. can move. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's a big thing for me to, to help get connected, yeah. to experiment, travel. That's why people love yeah. traveling, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I do. I love to travel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now let's go back to, you know, especially talking about my brothers mm-hmm. and the vulnerability factor. You know, it's like, how do, how can I reach, how can I reach them? How can I connect with them? Um, I know one of my brothers, um, he recently had twins. Um, he's probably the only brother out of the three I'm close to, but I'm not still close enough. And in having, you know, um, having talks with his wife, we, I see that it's still there, that, you know, he, they have that, that uh, mindset of, okay, well, I'm a man. You know, I gotta, I gotta keep it in, and you know, just kind of live life the way it should be, right? That society sees me at. So, um, you know, I want to try to break down that that wall. How do you know? Where do I start? I try to talk, but sometimes they don't open up because I'm the empath, right? And my, a lot of my conversations are partly, you know, with feelings, right? So, how do I how do I get there? You know? Yeah. I mean, one thing for me, if I was you and I'm speaking for my, is that I know that. If I were to like try to change or support, help my my brother and sister, yeah, when they aren't asking for it, yeah. they're gonna resist, right? And, yeah, you know, unsolicited advice, nobody yeah. likes that. So, yeah. and it's a different thing when I hear from my parents and I hear from my friend. Yeah. My parents could be giving me wisdom. Yeah, it comes from my parents. I'm like, yeah. no, I don't want to listen. Yeah. They're controlling me. And yes. then I listen to a friend, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Even to a stranger, right? Yes. Like, I'm so trustworthy to a stranger, yeah. right? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, I would I would take myself out of the situation and just like seeing seeing where the trend is going that mm-hmm. there's like more models. Yeah. Um when I grew up there was no model for me as a man of yeah. which a man should behave, right? Yeah. As a result, there's a lot of men that are still boys. Yes. Like the age of maturity sometimes comes alone, right? So right. we got little girls and little boys running around yeah. adult bodies right now. Because yeah. there's a lack of initiation. Yeah. So we might have people like Andrew Tate. Mm-hmm. You'll hear about him yeah. in those circles. Or Jordan Peterson, mm-hmm. Charles Eisenstein, Joe Rogan, I can name on and on. Mm-hmm. Of being those examples yeah. of that model that, hey, maybe I resonate with this guy. And yeah. I, he speaks to my truth. Yeah. I see it coming. Mm-hmm. That <clears throat> the healthy honest masculine is coming back the old ways of like the tough guy yeah right boys don't cry man up be a man it's it's not working yeah as a result we get um men that are over overly too sensitive right 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 uh and 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 no backbone yes Yes. that's not working no yeah so we're coming both full circle we're blending both together yeah and what's working both the masculine energy and the feminine energy that's right so it's understanding that it's an energy thing it's not having to do with sex yeah. or anything like that yeah your sexual preference none yeah. of that yeah it's the energy that imbue mm-hmm. and, the, and and we both have the masculine and feminine energy and they serve yeah. strengths in different ways yeah so i know that i cannot be my best self if i'm just in my masculine so if in my head i'm thinking logically and yeah. being strong and having that structure right yeah. that's just masculine yeah. where's the feminine coming in yeah so i'm not fully complete mm-hmm. here's the thing if I really want to love myself completely mm-hmm. and know that I'm not dependent and I have an interdependent relationship, not an independent relationship, but interdependent, That's a good one. that when I'm with someone, it's bonus time. Yeah. I got to be complete myself. Yeah. I got to be empowered. I yeah. cannot look to my girlfriend or wife to complete the other side of me. Yeah. Because now I'm using her. Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. And we get in this toxic relationship pattern. Yeah. So the idea is that I got to empower myself. I got to love myself. So that me and her, we come together, yeah. we're bonus time. Yeah. That's the idea. And we're still gonna work things through it. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the awareness of like, hey, like it's not fully complete. It's yeah. understanding that there's no weakness yeah. to the feminine energy. Because yeah. we all have it. Yes. What is feminine energy? Yeah. Feminine energy is empathy, compassion, connection, communication, yeah. flow, dance, play, singing, arts, 
hey, don't we all tap into that in a bit, right? Yeah. Flow, yeah. absolutely, play. Yeah. Yeah. That's feminine energy, purpose, connection to higher realm, yeah. right? It's understanding that feminine energy and not associating with particular sex. Yeah. Maybe for some like, uh, feminine belongs to a woman. Yeah. With yeah. those private parts. Yeah. Right away, I'm just excommunicating myself from that. Yeah. No so problem. I got a reframe of, wow, what feminine qualities within myself can I use to empower myself? Mm -hmm. So I can treat it like a video game yeah. as a skills tree and level up those points in that area. Yeah. So that's one way, mm -hmm. right? So first way, modeling, finding people to model. Yeah. Uh, the second way is redefining my relationship with the feminine energy. Right. Yeah. And of course, like, you know, hearing from other people. And here's another thing, mm -hmm. initiations. So what I've been doing uh, with my men's group, I call my group uh, the Alchemist of the Round Table. Right. Yeah. We're a transformational men's group. Yeah. And the idea with our group is raising the conscious humanity through self-empowerment mm -hmm. by embodying the work, mm -hmm. by coming home with gifts. And what does that mean? Is that we don't say we don't just say, we, we, we do it. Right. We do what we say. Mm -hmm. We embody the work. Right, we right. do what needs to be done without being asked. That's the masculine energy, yes. right? Taking out the garbage, mm -hmm. cleaning the dishes, like looking and taking self-personal leadership on those yes. things. Mm -hmm. There's garbage on the floor. Yeah. Even out in the public. Yeah. I'm going to pick it up. Wow. Put it in the garbage. That's yeah. self-leadership. Yeah. And that in itself is, is it being an example to other people yeah. to empower themselves to yeah. do the same thing. It's a ripple effect. Right, so we do this by embodying the work every day. Yeah. Right, and part of our, our uh, yeah. event when we have a gathering yeah. once a month, yeah. we come in person. Wow. We do a physical activity. So as men, yeah, a masculine energy is is creation energy. Mm -hmm. Sex energy is creation. Yeah. Even physically, you make mm -hmm. a baby out of that yeah. energy, right? Right. So men are here to build. They're here mm -hmm. to create. Like. Yeah. If there's no masculine, I'm talking about women too. Yeah. If there's no masculine energy, we wouldn't be having buildings or anything. Yeah. This wouldn't exist. We'd be chilling on the beach, sipping pina coladas, yeah. doing nothing. Yeah. Right? Though, where's that purpose come from? Yeah. Right? It comes from the feminine. Yeah. For me to tap within my heart to know yeah. why I'm here. Yeah. And then bring it into form in the physical using the masculine. Yeah. So it's both. Yeah. The yin and the yang. Yeah. You know, flow within the structure. If I flow and na, 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 na. Yeah. But there's no structure, yeah. I'm not gonna be free. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I'm gonna be struggling, this and that, even though like how, how come I, mm -hmm. I can't make some money here? Because yeah. well, there's no structure, there's no discipline, there's yeah. no process. If I'm so structured, yeah. so disciplined, what's gonna happen? Yeah, I'm gonna burn out. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna go, go, go. There's no play. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So understanding those qualities that oh my god, I am already that. Yeah. I'm sure your brothers have some feminine energy that's showing up in different ways. Well, they, then they are, well, two of them anyway, who are married. They are because they are married, right? So they have a, a constant female in their life, and I've noticed a slight improvement <laughs> because of that. Um, my youngest brother, who isn't married, he's still very, and he was, he was only two years old when my father passed away, so he really didn't have a father figure, and it was very difficult for him. You know, my brothers weren't really around. We were... You know, by the time he was 10 years old, we were in our 20s, we were all partying, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you do in your 20s. So he didn't really have a great example. Um, and my mom's friends, you know, you can, they can only do so much. So that's why I think it's, and even the way they treat, my br younger brother treated his girlfriends. I've seen it and it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. So, yeah. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Right? The lack of awareness. Yeah. And, and I, I would typically repeat the patterns I have in my yeah. past relationships. Yeah. So let's say if I don't learn from those lessons yeah. and I attract another woman, yeah. it's a different name, but the same woman. Same, same patterns, yeah. Wow. I, I, I show up the same way. Yeah. And it keeps yeah. happening, happening. Yeah. But going back to the monkey gathering is, it's called an initiation. So Ooh. doing a physical embodiment exercise. Yeah. So if a man goes through uh, rigorous exercise, so yeah. whether running up a hill, like tired, mm -hmm. MMA, Jiu Jitsu, yeah. um, dancing, let all the energy out. Yeah. Anything that requires physical activity, yeah. it's going to exhaust the man so much okay. that they cannot think in their heads anymore. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a perfect example of a cold plunge. Dumping into cold water gets me out of my head, period, and into my body. Oh, Because there's no way for me to think about anxious thoughts, think yeah. about what I need to do tomorrow, yeah. or depressing thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to survive here. I'm like, oh, yeah, right? yeah. I feel it. So yeah. right away, of course, if you do a cold shower, you get out, you feel yeah. so good. Yeah. Because I'm out of my head and into my body. Yeah. So once I'm into my body, 
that's when we can tap into the heart. That's when we can have the questions of like, yeah, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. And I also changed the way I, a word, I use words. Mm -hmm. We also say like, you know, what do you think? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That gets us right into our head. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about that? Yeah. That's it. And just building a vocabulary because yeah. a lot of men may not have the vocabulary of feelings. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Those are not feelings. No, I agree with you. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that one. But it's a start. Yeah. So then an initiation, to add it to your question before, mm -hmm. is, is a great way to get a man from their head into wow. the heart. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to give him that info. So, yeah, <laughs> cold plunge. Yeah. Like, do some Wim Hof, uh, mm -hmm. hot steam sauna. I think mm -hmm. these are the quickest ways for men to say yes to yeah. without feeling weird or that's awkward or yeah. that's not for me. Yeah. Going hunting. Going camping outdoors, solo, right. like yeah. that stuff, right? Yeah. That will get a man into the heart and gut. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of time away from life a little bit, take that break and yes. kind of, you know, like for me, I do that kind of self care type things, right? That I like to do on my own. Yeah, coming home to self. We're all trying to come home to ourselves. Yeah. So I learned that it's not about finding myself, but remembering yeah. who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And also on the way. Wow, that's powerful stuff. My goodness. Holy Andre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so tell me a little bit of, yeah, about the work you do, like yeah. in more detail. So you have that group. You also have um like the videos I've seen, you've you've uh, um, you've had um, you know, conversations with uh, with other people too. So um, you know, like I tell me more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, though before I tell you that, yeah. I want I want to list like the power of vulnerability. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And why it's not weakness? Mm -hmm. It's first for me. Yeah. Because I'm only as sick as my secrets. Yeah. And if I share something, yeah, that means I it doesn't have ownership on me. It doesn't right. have power over me. Yeah. You can't use that against me. I yeah. always go back to the scene in Eight Mile with Eminem. Yeah. In our last final rap battle, mm -hmm. you just shared all this dirty laundry. Yeah. Right? That's a great scene to show that yeah. all this stuff yeah. has no effect on yeah. me. Yeah. So that goes to a place of like I like forgiving myself. I yeah. own it. I love myself. Yeah. So that's where is the power. Absolutely. It's kind of weird, right? Like, wait a minute, is that a weak? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I get to the point of sharing it, it no longer has that effect on yeah. me. So therefore, I gain that power back. Right. I'm not giving my power away to to a secret that I'm right. trying to hide. Yeah. It's like a weight. Yeah. Right. You carry that. And then yes. when, you, when you've released it, yes. right, it's lighter. That's why they say the truth sets you free. Absolutely. And who cares what people say? Like, It's hard, I know. Yeah. It's hard. It gets yeah. to a point where I slowly got to peel back the onion yeah. and start working on myself and start yeah. loving myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Just keep doing work on yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> Getting yeah. more experiences. Yeah. Do the experiences. Yeah. It's like, wow, yeah. I'm a pretty good person. Yeah. I'm a decent human being. Yeah. I'm pretty good at these stuff. Yeah, yeah. And confidence will come. Yeah. So it's just more of like, let's, let's stretch out the comfort zone just a yeah. bit. Yeah. If I stay in my box, not good. Yeah. If I think about it, not good. Yeah. I just get like closer and closer on myself. Yeah. So just doing something new, and experiment, yeah. and change, and then it'll come. I think that, for me, all secret sauce. For me, it was uh, you know the self confidence came from listening to all the people judging me, mm -hmm. and I, I really because. I, I've always been a people pleaser. I was trying to make people happy. And when I didn't or don't, I really, I'm hard on myself. Um, but I have to remember that I'm, I'm trying to do my best. That's the thing is the trying. I'm really trying. Um, and I've learned, you know, as, as I meet more people through my entrepreneur journey and my networking, um, I'm seeing that people don't care about those little things, right? That I'm worried about. Mm. Um, and that I am getting, uh, you know, the support that I'm supposed to be getting. And maybe it had to do with the old group that I was hanging out with, mm. you know? Maybe the, those are the people I shouldn't have been hanging out with that are judging me. So, so yeah, I understand. I love it. See, there's more power to that. Yeah. Besides, like, not letting it control me. Yeah. I'm putting the call out to the universe, to my community yeah. for support. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm humbling myself yeah. that, hey, I need support here. Yeah. So I can't do it alone. Yes. Right. And then that's so empowering, and it also inspires other people. You're you're doing this. You're yeah. moving forward. You're taking the action. Yeah. There's people that are watching. Later. Right. Right. <laughs> Though some people might be like, huh, you know, mm -hmm. maybe some people are like, wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
You're inspiring them. Yeah, that's what I'm. Action. That is what I'm trying to do. And like, again, back to the self confidence. I still have those voices in my head, mm-hmm. but in my heart, my heart is saying, "Keep going," because you have a message mm-hmm. you need to get out, and it's yeah. so important. So leave those people alone. <laughs> Here's the thing: the heart knows you don't fear. That yeah, that is exactly. Oh my God, Andre, that is so true. Because I've had challenges these this through this journey, and I've had to step back a few times and go, "Do I should I be really doing this?" And my heart keeps saying, "You belong here." Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> totally, like you just you said it. That was dead on. Exactly what I'm experiencing. It's like, why am I why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And my heart's saying, "Because you have to." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! You'd never be disappointed if you let your heart guide you. Yeah. Right? And that's where the mind can come in yeah. and support that dream by providing that structure, right? Yeah. And, and rationality yeah. to the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The mind is is a, a terrible master, but a wonderful sort of. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. So, so Absolutely. Being in the spirit of things, right? Yeah. Being the spirit of it. Yeah. And I, I gotta do that too. I, yeah. ch- I gotta check myself. Have reminders, whether it be people, yeah. my phone wallpaper, the yeah. music I listen to, yeah. my environment. Wow. Just to check myself back into my spirit. Yeah. Because there's yeah. times where I'm like, oh, I'm tired or yeah. I'm judging myself. Yeah. I'm in my head. Yeah. That's where the fear lives. Yeah. And you got to get back to here. Oh, my God. <clears throat> you just gave me some advice that I didn't even know I needed. Mm. <laughs> hey, you, you got you to hear what you got to hear, right? Yeah. Holy uh, crap. And maybe I, I knew it, but I didn't know it until you just said it, mm. really. Because it is the heart. And I was maybe fighting it off. You know what I mean? Mm. Wow. That was power right there. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I want to share that power of our vulnerability <sighs> there. There's so much power to that. Totally. And, and it, I know it to be true because I've lived it. Right? Yeah. I, I've come to a place where I was in my head, mm-hmm. shy, introverted, disconnected, yeah. using a lot of substances to know myself to now like yeah. speaking fully from here. And it took practice. I just get implanted myself in those yeah. moments, right? Yeah, yeah. And now that led me to this work that I do where... I'm a coach and oh, awesome. I'm, I'm so happy with this work because this is my life's work. Like it made me realize I'm not here to like build physical bridges or like physically put out fires. Yeah. I'm here to empower those people that do. Yeah. And I do this by seeking my own truth and I call it the mountain of truth. And there's so many different pathways okay. up it. Yeah. And just searching up that. Though I don't want to do this alone. Yeah. And I'm like, <clears throat> I want to do this with other people that yeah. are like-minded. So why not? Yeah. So that's why, you know, I formed the Alchemist of the Round Table. Yeah. We meet three times a week. Wow. And it's, you know, the Mondays we, we transform together. We pick a topic mm-hmm. and we learn. Mm-hmm. And we apply it. And then we hold each other accountable to that. Yeah. And then on Wednesdays we have a free flow conversation. Yeah. About oh. whatever is on our mind. So it's oh. a great way to like air it out. I love Speak that. Speak from the heart. Yes. Right? Having that safe space. Yeah. Connect. And then on Fridays we have a study. It's like a book club. Yeah. So we pick a an esoteric topic. Yeah. There's a lot of wisdom in ancient teachings. Yes. So I'm packing those ancient teachings and not reinventing the wheel. Oh my gosh. So we do that and then we get together once a month. Yeah. And sometimes more. Yeah. Come together and do yeah. some activities together. Wow. And uh, that's the work you know, that I, is uh, I'm doing right now. I'm focused on. It's providing space for yeah. why, why men. Yeah. I just find it's the perfect time. Absolutely. I Besides, totally I'm a man. You. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, it's, it's, it's time for men to, to rise up. It's needed. Yes, it's much needed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, men, men that are strong mm-hmm. and powerful from within. Yeah. That are confident. Yeah. That are convicted. Yeah. Disciplined. Yeah. And, wow. and also dangerous. Yeah, in a good way. Yes, in a yeah. good way. You know, a dangerous man is a good, is a strong man because they don't need to prove anything anymore. Right. There's, there's no insecurity that's yeah. being leaked out. Because wow. if I'm not dealing with those demons within me, yeah, those unconscious behaviors, mm-hmm. they're going to show up in pa- passive yeah. aggressive ways. Yeah, yeah. Even with anger, mm-hmm. um, if I don't have a way to express it, yeah, that suppression of it can yeah. lead to violence. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now you just triggered another thought. Is um, I was watching a CBC documentary on um, mental health and the oil field workers, mm-hmm. and how they had that stigma of. Okay, well, to be a man, you got to hold it in. Yeah, you know, just do what you got to do. 
and forget about your feelings. And what we've seen through that is, you know, the alcoholism, the drugs, um, the abusive relationships that, you know, we're talking about. And so all that vulnerability is not able to be shown, you know, because of that stigma, which is unfortunate. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's nice that we're talking about this because it's so important, especially for men, you know, women are more empathic, more emotional. And I think it's time for men, um, to be that way too. Right. Yeah. I, I see it as a way that men are, we're circling around the men. Yes. We're supporting the men from, from the back. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that non-judgment of yeah. allowing a man to tap in their heart yeah. is much needed yeah. to allow a man to step yeah. into it. Yeah. And if I go to my wife or girlfriend and I share from a vulnerable place yeah. and I don't feel good. Well, it's because the space is not safe. <laughs> and I may, I may be with someone that is disempowered. Yes. Yeah. The wife, I'm with I'm with someone that is providing a safe space for me. Yeah. yeah right? Exactly. And that is an empowered woman. Yeah. So I get to communicate to my woman vulnerably in that space. Mm-hmm. Now, what I share to my woman to my man is different, yeah. depending on the context. Yeah. Though I know that what I share to a woman, some some men might disagree with me on mm-hmm. this. Like, well, you know, she might see you different she might see yeah. you less than yeah i would say well it depends if the woman's empowered or not yeah and it also depends on if i am going to take the action yeah. to change yeah if i keep saying the same thing over and yeah. over and over again no wonder right it's going to be not good yeah it's not working <laughs> maybe yeah. take the action yeah. if i say it it's time for me to take yeah. or else i'm just complaining yeah right yeah and you talk about like the oil field workers and everything how that environment just breeds that right that close close heart yeah and it's so easy for me to let's say if i was in there get sucked into it mm-hmm. because i'll be extradited from yeah. my community i wouldn't be yeah. welcome to be in i wouldn't yeah. get extra shift work if yeah. i'm different yeah. or i'm that guy it's like high school all over mm-hmm. again right exactly but here's the thing <clears throat> if i'm drinking i'm doing drugs i'm hiring you know, prostitutes yeah. or whatever yeah are you saying that i don't have needs those those are needs aren't you aren't right you're right? looking at that yeah. right so we all have needs yeah and and we've been kind of brainwashed to, yeah. to think that we don't have needs. I'm mean, yeah. including men and women. Yeah. And, and having needs is not, not about being needy. Yeah. <clears throat> it's been changed to, 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 be, to be seen as needy, yeah. selfish, yeah. and like dependent. Yeah. And it's like icky, right? Yeah. No, needs are referring to your life-serving energy. Mm-hmm. A need is like shelter, food, yeah. water, right? Sex, companionship, connection, connection. Yeah. or even ease, peace, harmony, fulfillment, yeah. liberty. We all have those needs. These are yeah. basic human needs. Yeah. And if my needs are met, then that gives me energy to serve. Support. Exactly. Good point. Wow. That's yeah. powerful. You know, you talk about your uh, Wednesday, where uh, a group that you have where everyone just talks mm. and you, they have a safe space to listen, obviously, because I'm a listener. That's important to me. Yeah. You know, and um, we know that uh, there's something that I think is important is, uh, you know, Bell Let's Talk Day is coming up January 26th. Mm. So, again, um, it's reaching every group right every every human right and it's important for men to know that to be vulnerable doesn't mean that it's a weakness mm-hmm. that it's you know it's a power it's mm-hmm. great power yeah. you know absolutely you know we yeah. hear it all the time yeah i mean you hear it from brene brown yeah who's like known for yes yeah right? yeah though now you get to hear it from andre yeah. As a man, that yes, it is power. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Your authenticity, yeah, is what makes you you that attracts the right people to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Like I'd rather have people that like me for who I am. Yeah, than pretending that yeah, I'm someone. Yeah, that I'm not. Right? Yeah, so. you're your authentic self, and that is why I wanted you here today for so many reasons. Because authentic I wanted, power. I wanted my brothers to see that you know there can be men like you who are vulnerable and don't don't have any fear or any any uh you know um worry that they're going to be judged right and i think i still i still have that yeah we all do i definitely do (laughs) i still have that's a work in progress for me (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah but it's it's a work in progress and i think it's important that we find more people who will give us that safe space yeah yeah Yeah. it's a practice right yeah going back to like negative thoughts feelings judging it happens yeah and I know it's never gonna go away from yeah. me because I'm a human being. Yes. Yeah. It's just now my ability to catch it yeah. and switch. Yes. So it's my bounce back time. Yeah. So I'm working out my mental yeah. muscle. That's, That's awesome. it. awesome. Yeah. Right. That what separates the high performers from the next person yeah. is a recovery 
Right. Yeah. And I think the work that you do too, especially with, with me, um, you know, uh, I kind of get this, uh, you know, I had a situation with my son where he's like, you know, mom, you don't listen to me. And I took that to heart because it was like, oh my God, I'm, mm. I'm a listener and I'm not even listening to my son. But what I've learned through people like yourself and other life uh, coaches and people who do this kind of work is it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a like a, an education, a training and a, and a, and a learning process, you know, to helping others, uh, you know, especially listening, right? I, I'm not perfect, right? But I still want to get that message out there, just like you're trying to get your message out there, right? Um, and I think the, the more of us there are, I think it, the world would be at a better place. <laughs> yeah. It's like we, we got to practice our craft that we... Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. For me, like, I have to embody the work. Yeah. So... Practice me, what you preach, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For me to, like, lead someone, mentor, or be yeah. that example, I, I got to do the inner work on myself. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And though yeah. It's, it's the most fulfilling work ever. Isn't it? Oh. It is. It is. To peel back the layers. Because yeah. I just show up differently. I walk yeah. differently. Yeah. I, I coined the term... term authentic power yeah right yeah that that no one can take that away yeah. from you wow once you discover that yeah uh, you become magnetized and <laughs> aligned aligned and this then awesome. the happiness will come yeah because the happiness is a choice now yeah, yeah. so knowing that it, like there's certain wisdom checkpoints yeah. along the way yeah. to get there to be here now oh my gosh yeah wow oh my gosh andre this is so awesome seriously this is like the work that you do is incredible in my mind um, because I know it's resonating with me, like I told you, for my brother. So I'm, I'm, really, I'm really hoping that we reach a wider, a wider audience with, with my, my male audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Uh, I would yeah. love to share on this. So yeah. I'd love for another opportunity. Yo, to we're, we're going to be facets. having more conversations for sure. Yeah, this is yeah, incredible. This is yeah. Many pieces. Awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. This <laughs> oh. is awesome.